Okay, so what we want to do now is when we uh, press the set folder com command, what we want it to do is actually um, pull up um, uh, pull up the uh, a file browser dialog. So let's replace this uh, little uh, print command here uh, with uh, if we go commands uh, file browser uh, dialog. Should come up blue. Yes, great. Okay, and there are different modes to this. Um, all these things you can look up. Um, we're going to go to mode equals four. What that means is we're using it to select a folder. Uh, essentially, is what what that means. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so we go mode four, and next thing we do is we go F C. Um, so basically, this is the uh, command. If we just go, um, I've just pulled up the uh, this um, in the in the reference, and this is the file command. This is the script to run, i.e., the function to run. Okay, uh, once a um, folder has been selected, so that will be the function that we're going to define down here. Okay, and we're going to call it again. We could call it whatever we want. So as long as we go self first, self dot, and I call it relink folder. Okay. Um, next, we're going to go uh, an, which is basically uh, a, a name that we're going to give the button uh, that the user presses in this dialog window. Okay, uh, and then finally, um, we're going to go um, on, which is basically operating mode. And what we're doing is, is we're going to put it in operating. There's different operating modes in here. Um, uh, and it is useful to get used to using this reference. Uh, so different operating modes in here. Uh, let me just scroll down here. Um, uh, but what we want is reference, i.e. We, we don't want it to do a save or an import or anything like that. Uh, we just want it to give us a reference to that folder. That's all we want. Okay. Um, so OM uh, and we just go reference. Okay. Uh, great. Okay, and that is, so that is the entirety of uh, this command here, okay? Uh, and what we need to then do is start defining a function in here uh, to respond to that command. So I'm going to go um, def, uh, we call it uh, relink folder, okay? So one of the things that's quite useful to do as well in the documentation is... Um, if we go in here and we look at, um, we scroll and look at the example, you can see an example where they've set up the dialog here and it's going to call this import, um, uh, it's going to call this import image um, command, okay, or oh, sorry, import image command here, okay. Um, and you can see in the import image command, we've got this uh, couple of arguments here called file name and file type. So that suggests to us that we need to be able to support those arguments coming in, even if we're not using them or they might not be relevant to the mode that we've, we're using them. It suggests that we should be uh, you, having these commands in here. So again, we will have, uh, so when we define this, we're going to put an argument called self, which basically says it's part of self. Uh, and we get all the properties that are inside of self, uh, or we get the self object that we can refer to, okay? Um, uh, but also what we want to do is create space for the file name, a file name argument, and a file type argument, okay? If you don't create placeholders for these arguments, then what happens is um, you'll get an error, uh, which obviously we don't want. Okay, um, great. Now what we're going to do is we just simply want to place the folder that was that's been given to us as a result of this, as a result of the user's action. Um, so, so this function will effectively be triggered when the user closes the dialog box or goes set the fold when clicks the set folder button. Okay, the dialog box will close and this function will be ran. And what we want to do as a result of that is put the um, uh, uh, the URL or the uh, folder address of that into our text field. Okay, so I'm going to go commands dot text field. Okay, and I'm going to go self dot text field 
okay so it's kind of an odd way that Maya works so what I have to do is run the text field command but then tell Maya which text field I'm actually running this command on okay so um, and we're running it on the text field uh, uh, self dot text field which I think have I spelt that correctly no nope. it's gonna be text field folder location so let's just grab that from here uh, where are we text field folder location so we've got to tell Maya which text field we're running this function on. Okay, and then we can start putting in some other parameters. So what we want to do is we want to go um, edit equals true. So we're saying we want to actually edit this now. Okay, and um, so the text field f command, we have to tell it which text field we want to, uh, that we want to edit. We want to tell it that we're editing it because we could just be querying it, uh, i.e. just looking up the data rather than editing it. In this case, we're editing it. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to be going to put in there text equals. So we're going to set the text in there to equal file name. So whatever's passed in to file name into this function as a result of the user's action, we want to put that into the text field. OK, so let's go control A and let's run that. OK, I'm going to set a folder location so you can see that we've got set folder here. If I click on textures and click on the set folder, it's put it in there. Great. And the user can also edit that and do whatever they want with that, okay, uh, if they need to. Great. Now what we want to do is we want to do that final bit of functionality where when we click the relink tool, it actually relinks to whatever folder is inside of that, is referred to inside that text. Okay, so we're looking at this uh, relink textures button here, okay. Again, I'm going to delete the uh, print command because we don't need that anymore. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to pull out, we want to actually just recall whatever has been put into that text field, okay, uh, and put that into a variable. I'm going to call that variable base path, okay, and that's going to equal, again, we've got to go commands.textField, okay, so it's the same command that we that we call to set it, that we call to query it, we have to put different parameters in. Again, it's kind of just the way that uh, uh, Maya has implemented um, uh, m m uh, Python, uh, yeah, uh, the Python script. Okay, so um, self. So again, we're going to use this self dot title location. Okay, this time we're going to say query equals true to say that we're querying it. Okay, okay. I just want to find out what's in that value. Okay, and what we're querying because it could be various properties about that text field that we're querying. We want to uh, query the text parameter okay i.e. what's in the text field and we just say true okay so we just have to say that that's true as well okay so again a bit clunky way of doing it but that's how it works so we have to call the text field command tell it which text field we're referring to say that we're doing a query and tell it that we're actually querying the text property uh, of that text field again if I go to um, uh, uh, if I go to here and just search uh, text field substring, okay, you can see here's text field and the different properties come up. So there are lots of different properties that you could uh, look at, but the one that we're interested in is obviously text, the main one that you're interested in, uh, text, which is what, what what is inside the text field, okay? So hopefully you're kind of getting an idea. I mean, we're not trying to cover that too much in this lesson, uh, but an idea of how to relate the um, help uh, with what I'm doing inside of um, this script here. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to create a list of all the file nodes that are inside of our Maya uh, scene. Okay, so uh, so this list is uh, a list is something that doesn't contain one value. It can contain multiple values uh, or no values at all. Okay, so it's, it's a list. It can have nothing in the list or 20 items, 40 items, however many items in the list. So this will have as many items as there are file nodes in your scene. Okay, so uh, we're going to go, uh, I'm going to call the list file nodes. Again, we could call this whatever we want. Uh, and we're going to go commands um, dot ls. So, so Maya has this command called ls built into it. I really advise you to look it up because it's a very flexible command. It's a very useful command. And what we're going to do is I'm going to say I want okay the type equals file okay so what this is going to do is it's going to search our scene for 
um, file nodes, okay, uh, and put them and add them to this list here, okay. Uh, and so ultimately, we will end up with a list of uh, file nodes. Now, what I want to do is I want to start a, a loop and loop through every single one of these file nodes so that I can go in and correct them, okay. So I'm going to go uh, for uh, node. So again, I could define any variable I want. I'm going to call it node uh, in file nodes. So that's the uh, this this uh, list that we just created. Okay, uh, and then it's going to repeat as this set of commands that we're about to specify for every single node. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is for every single node we want to work out what the current path is for that file node. Okay, and the reason we want the current path is right at the end of it. It's going to give us the actual file name. Um, uh, it's going to give us the actual uh, yeah name of the file, and that's ultimately what we want to extract from this. Okay, so so what we want to do is I'm going to create a variable called current path. Okay, uh, and it's going to get equal commands uh, dot get uh, atta. Okay, so. This is another mayor command, a very powerful one as well that's worth looking at, uh, which is basically it allows you to get the attributes of any node inside of your mayor scene. Okay, so I can go get atta. I specify the node that I want to access the attribute of. So uh, in this case, it's node because we're going to, it will be whatever node is referenced uh, by node here. Okay, as it loops through. Uh, and we just go plus. Um, and uh, uh, the attribute we're after is called file texture, okay, uh, name, okay, and I should just kind of explain what we're doing here. So what we're actually doing is I'm going, um, let's just, I, I, let's say I've got a file node called uh, 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 my file, okay. Right, that's my, and that happens to be there's a file node called my file inside of um, uh, uh, inside of our Maya scene, and what this is actually doing is it's actually just looking for um, my file dot file texture name. Okay, so ultimately, to find an attribute, we have to go node the name of the node dot the attribute that we want. Okay, now obviously the name name of the node or the reference to the node is contained in here um, and uh, we know it's this attribute so actually what we're doing with this plus sign is we're not adding anything we're just concatenating these two bits so we're basically concatenating the name of this node that we're referencing with this property okay in order to find it okay so it's just conc concatenating two bits of text there uh, in order to um, uh, in order to ref reference uh, the attribute of that node okay so before we continue, if we just have a look at what's currently happening, if I go print uh, current path, okay, what we should end up with, uh, so if I go control A and we run this uh, and we do a, a texture relink, okay, and I just go uh, set folder and let's do relink textures. You can see it's listing, okay, where all the folders are, okay, sorry, where all these uh, images are for our um uh, where all these images are for our uh, uh, located on our on our drive, so it's, it's showing us where they are, and it's showing us where they're currently re ref re referring to. Now this drive doesn't exist, this folder doesn't exist because I've moved it around or it's been moved to a different computer. Um, so I want, but what I want is I want to basically extract this bit. So this bit's all wrong, and I want to replace this bit. Okay. Um, uh, what I want to do is just extract this bit, which is the, the actual name of the file at the end of it. Okay. So what I want to do, you'll notice that our structure here, in fact, I want to get rid of all of that and then just get this bit here. So what you'll find is our basic structure here is, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, what you'll find here is, um, uh, that our text is kind of broken down into these, it's broken up actually by these forward slashes, uh, which obviously define as it goes down the folder structure. Okay, um, but that's really useful to us. We can use that and use that to kind of split our text up into sections. Okay, so what we can do is I'm just going to go return here, 
uh, we can actually just go, uh, we can go uh, path split, okay, uh, and this is just a variable, okay, so, um, in fact, I'm just going to call it paths, okay, uh, no, path list, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to split this down, okay, into the individual elements between, um, uh, between the forward slashes, okay, and I'm going to call it, uh, and so what we're going to do is, um, yeah, split that down and create a list of all the individual elements between the different forward slashes. So that list is going to be called path list, and it's going to be equal current path, okay, um, dot split, um, and we're going to split, obviously, so current path dot split this is a function that's built into python okay and it's going to split uh, this string here okay based on the forward slash okay uh, great uh, and and what we want is just the last value in this so in this path list we just want the last value to get that last value if i go file name uh, equals so i'm going to create a variable called file name and it's going to equal path split okay um and in square brackets, so I can refer to uh, different elements of that list. If I go zero, that would give me the first element in this list, okay? And if I go one, it will give me the second element of this list. To get the last one, I can just go minus one, okay? And let's just go, so I'm just going to change this print command now, just to show you that this is working. So basically, we we split this down to create a list, and then all we're doing is grabbing a list uh, of all these different elements between the forward slashes, and then all we're doing is grabbing the last one, which is this, uh, which will be the file name. Okay, um, so let's just print off file name, and you shall see that working. Let's just go play again. I'm just going to go. If I just click relink textures, should be fine. Uh, oh no, it actually wants something. Uh, oh, path split not defined. Uh, has it got a line for that? Line 66. Oh, yes. Sorry, I didn't call it path split, did I? I call it path list. I call it the wrong name. There we go. Let's do that again. Play and relink textures. And you can see, there we are. It's found all the, all the file names. And you can see it's linking loads and loads of files for us. But it's getting rid of um, uh, lots of... Uh, yeah, it's getting rid of lots of files that we don't want. Uh, sorry, it's getting rid of... All the rest of the, um, uh, the the folder location that we don't want. Okay, so now what we want to do is basically just add that to the uh, add these this file name uh, to the um, uh, to, to create a new path. What we want to do is add the file name. So if I go new path, add the file name to the to the base path that we took from the text field. Okay, so new path uh, is going to equal. Okay, um, and I'm going to go dollar s forward slash dollar s. Uh, in fact, I can just do it with single quotes. Let's do it with single quotes. Okay, percentage base path. Sorry, I need to put brackets in there. So it's going to be the base path followed by the file name, okay? And let me just explain here, because I could just go, um, I could just go new path uh, equals uh, base path, um, plus file name, okay? Uh, but the concern with that is any kind of weird, um, uh, um, any kind of weird, um, uh, any kind of weird um, uh, symbols such as the forward slash or underscore, uh, etc., might be kind of might cause problems with this uh, approach, uh, which is called concatenation. So a, a different approach, a more sort of rigorous approach, is we're saying right, I've got two strings, okay, and in between those two strings, I have a forward slash. Okay, um, um, and 
basically I'm going to specify the strings in that in that in the order that you see them here. So this first string will be called base pass. So the place where the strings are is dollar s. That's string one. Then there's string two, and between those strings I've got a forward slash character. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Um, so in fact this wouldn't have worked. I would need to have gone plus forward slash uh, forward slash plus file name and then this forward slash will start causing us problems because forward slash is actually an escape code uh, as well uh, so we'd have to escape the escape code I'll probably have to go forward slash forward slash or something like that um, so it gets a little bit messy so this approach here is much better so I'm saying I've got a string here I've got a forward slash then I've got a forward slash and then I've got another string and the first string is going to be base path and the second string is going to be file name okay so it's basically like a template and then I'm specifying the values to go into that template okay so that's the new path and then what we want to do is set the attribute that we were looking at up here okay um, uh, to this value here in new path okay so we're going to go commands uh, and this time we're going to go set uh, atta, okay, uh, and we're going to go node uh, plus, okay, and we go dot file name. So we do it in exactly the same way as we did before. File uh, texture name, okay, um, and you can look all this sort of information up if you click on the file node. Um, in fact, I'll try that in a moment. Uh, you should find all this information like uh, that, 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 that is available. Okay, um, but I'll try that in a moment. Okay, file name, uh, new path. So we're going to set it. So what we're doing is we're saying this is the attribute that I want to set. Okay, uh, I don't want to actually close the brackets here. Sorry, this is the file name I want to set. And uh, and I want to set it to the value new path, okay. Um, and what we do need to do is just specify that the type of value that we're setting is a string. So we do need to tell it that, um, and we need to put that in single quotes, okay. So specifying that, okay. And we don't need this uh, print command anymore. So this should be our tool now complete okay so i'm going to go control a uh, and i'm just going to go and go play uh, and let's go set folder uh, textures um, yeah it's the textures folder i want sorry let's go up textures and just go set folder and then click relink okay oh there's a slight problem that's come up let's have a look yeah, all I've done is I've in this set atta I went um, string with a capital S. Okay, so let's just kill that window, run it all again. Look. Hopefully this time we will get it correct. Set folder and relink textures. There we go, and it's relinked all our textures. So that tool is nicely working for us. Okay. Um, another thing that we can do is uh, once we've got this here, uh, if we want to redo this functionality, I could just save this in an external file, just using any text editor, just copy and paste it into a text editor, call it uh, .py, um, and then I can just drag that .py file into uh, my Maya scene, and it will automatically run the script. Another thing I can do if I want to make this script reusable is I can highlight it. So let's just, uh, if I highlight it here, uh, in fact, I don't even need to highlight it. Uh, I can just click um, File, uh, Save Script to Shelf, okay, and I'll just give it a, a new relink. Okay, it's going to call it New Relink. And click OK. And you can see it's, it's put it onto the shelf that we had open, it's put it on there. So now when I click on that, uh, it'll just automatically pull this up. Okay, so that's just a way that we can kind of make that functionality nice and reusable. And it's kind of giving an idea of how we can actually mold things in Maya and make Maya work the way that we want to. 
So all I wanted to do was just sort of finish up by just showing you where you can kind of get a bit more information on uh, the commands that you can use for your UI controls. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, if you go to help and you just go to uh, scripting reference, Python command reference, um, and if you click on here, so it'll take you to a website which has got a load of information on it. But if you click on controls, uh, it will list all the different sort of UI controls and layouts. Uh, so basically, it's going to give you all the kind of information that's relevant uh, to to the stuff that we're using in UI. So the things like uh, I'm looking for button. There we are, button. Uh, text field will be in there um, and all the bits that we've used in our UI you can see in here and you can click on it and get more information on how to actually use those um, uh, those commands as well okay so hopefully that's sort of giving you some ideas of things you can do and kind of give you an idea of how you can kind of interrogate your scene and uh, create um, UI tools um, uh, to kind of fix things okay